Lesson 6. Love Heals All Things Indeed, greetings unto you, beloved and holy friends. Indeed, greetings unto you, beloved and holy friends. If you understand the meaning of this greeting, if you comprehend the depth of each term used, already you know all there is to know, and you are well prepared to extend the love of God forever. Indeed means simply that there are no other options. Greetings unto you means salutations to the one created of the Father before all things, for I bow down before your radiance. Beloved and holy child of God, indeed beloved of God, indeed beloved of every molecule in your physical universe, indeed loved of your holy mother, this precious earth, indeed loved by anything you can imagine that has ever existed or ever could exist that has extended itself from the heart and mind of God. You are the beloved, pure and simple. And again, there are no options. Holy, because you are whole. Not because you have earned that holiness, but because it is that which is the truth from which you are extended forth forever. Because you are made in the image of God. Because you spring forth from the mind of God. You are holiness itself each time you set aside the temptation to dream a useless dream and walk this earth as Christ. Beloved and holy friend, a friend is not one lesser than myself. A friend is one who walks in perfect equality with the grandest of masters, whoever you might conceive such a master to be. A friend is one who chooses to look upon another and see only the face of Christ therein. There is no one who shall receive these words who has not already looked upon me and seen the face of Christ within. And likewise, I look upon you and call you friend. For when I look upon you, I see not the very momentary dreams that you seem to think are lasting so long. I see only the radiance of that which the Father has extended out of love. I see only that which is neither beginning nor ending. I see only that which knows neither birth nor death. I see only that which has no limitation. I see only that, the light of which is already extended throughout all dimensions and all universes. I see only my brother and sister. I see not a trace of any quality between us. Yet I do recognize that within your dreams it appears to you that I have gone ahead just a little bit. At times within your hearts there is a longing to follow me. If you would but heed that longing, if you would make that longing primary at all times, your own desire will bring you wholly to where I am. And you will laugh when you discover that you have not moved an inch, that where I am is where you are, and where you are is in eternity, not in time. That where you are is in the place of your birth, the mind of God. This is the only thing that is true, and it is true always. This is the only reality that you genuinely possess. Therefore, indeed, I call you friend. For well do I see that you are as I am. Therefore, indeed, greetings unto you, beloved and holy friends. There is nothing else to be said, yet the mind races, does it not? It races away from the very reality that I have just described about you. The mind races from the source as a sunbeam from the sun, yet in reality it never leaves its source. The very power with which you seem to become distracted by a momentary thought of fear is the same power by which you will awaken to your own calm. If you would know love, know yourself. In truth, there is a place within you that already knows the day and the hour. You already know when you are going to decide to live the decision to be awakened God, to be only the presence of love. Love embraces all things, allows all things, trusts all things, and thereby transcends all things. Love is never possessive. Love is never fearful. Love is simply love. Love cannot shine with specialness upon anyone at any time. For specialness itself is a contraction, the attempt to take love and make it shine only on one object, only on one person, only on one being, and only within one universe. Therefore, whenever you recognize that you have singled someone or something out and said, you hold a greater value, you may rest assured that you are not in love at all. You are in fear. And if that one were to leave you, where would you be? But if you are in love as a fish within the sea, all beings can arise and pass away, and you will bless them in their journey. You will remember that you reside where God has placed you, in her heart. When you choose to be only the presence of love, even the dream of loss will dissolve from your consciousness as a forest mist before the rising sun. Indeed, beloved friends, love does wait upon your welcome. Yet you cannot welcome love by waiting for it to be brought to you by another, not even by me. You cannot welcome love by trying to scurry about to create the environment in which you believe your preferences are to be met. You cannot welcome love when that welcome is attached or linked to any phenomenal thing, anything that has been birthed in time. 
Love can only be welcomed where love truly resides, and love resides within you as the core and the source of your very being. Therefore, if you would know love, know yourself. Embrace the truth about it, and the truth will set you free. Then, indeed, love will flow through you. Like the great sunlight that comes to nurture this beloved earth, the love that flows through you will be unimpeded. It will not meet an obstacle. You will look upon whomever is in front of you, and you will know that you are sent unto you of the Father. The Holy Spirit has guided them to you, because through you, love can be given in a way that begins to touch the place of their awakening. That is why you are but the servant of love. That is all that life is. When you choose to surrender, to give up the game, to give up the dream of trying to resist the truth that is true about you always, you will become a mere channel, a mere conduit. You will become no more a seeker, for you will have decided to have found. When you have surrendered the last vestige of the insane possibility of contracting away from the truth, when you have given that up, love will flow through you. But notice that if it flows through you, it must first flow to you. Therefore, seek always to receive in order to give. For what can you give another if you have not received it to yourself? How many of you have been taught to try to love, to try and do the right thing, the good thing? Yet how many times have you gone within your secret chamber and said, I am unworthy? Then you wonder why your attempts to join in love with others never seem to be quite fulfilling enough, never quite seem to fill the cup, never quite seem to elicit the joy that you believe could be there. Listen well. Your work, if you wish to call it that, is not to seek and find love. It is merely to turn within to discover every obstacle that you have created to its presence, and to offer that obstacle to the great dissolver of dreams, the grace of the Holy Spirit. I have said unto you many times that the greatest of gifts you can give is this, to come wholly to the recognition that every attempt you have made to resist being the presence of Christ has failed you miserably. No matter how many times you have tried to convince yourself that you are unworthy, yet does the universe find a way to love you. No matter how many times you have tried to lock yourself into the space and volume of a body, it has not succeeded. And at death you have remembered and been confronted with the radiance of your unlimitedness. Therefore the greatest of gifts you can give another is to be one who has rescinded the need to insist on the insanity of fear. The Primary Characteristic of Mastery Fearlessness is the primary characteristic of mastery. Mastery is not having great power to make things happen. It is only the recognition that what is true is true always, and there is no other choice. Free will does not mean that you have the right to believe that you can succeed at being other than what God created you to be. Having free will does not mean that you can elect not to take the only curriculum that life is offering to you in every moment. It means only that you do have the right to put it off yet another day, and each time you put it off you slumber in your suffering. But when you elect to take the only curriculum that matters, when you elect to use the power of your free will to say, Now from this moment on, I will no longer tolerate error in myself. No more games, no more dreams. I am committed to being only the presence of love, for that is the truth of who I am. It matters not the opinions of others who are yet resisting that decision. Then indeed all things under heaven and earth move to support you to guide you to the right person, the right place, the right book, the right sunrise, the right meadow, in order to assist you in dropping the shackles of the obstacles to the presence of love that you have created as an idol and as a substitute for love. That is why when you truly pray from the depth of your soul, God bring me home, you may rest assured from that moment on it is fine to trust every little thing that unfolds. For though you see it not, what you call angels, friends that simply do not have bodies, are rushing about because you have given a command. Yes, I accept your presence in my life. I turn the whole thing over. Now each moment is dedicated to healing and awakening the illusory sense of separation from God that once I created an error. In how many ways have you sought love? Can you count the ways? Would you dare to try to count each little pebble of sand on the beach of your planet? Each and every soul has already tried to seek out love in that many ways, if not more. You have sought it in a million forms in which you already knew that you could not find it, all because you wanted to perpetuate the insane attempt to try and separate yourself from God, and that is as futile as a sunbeam trying to separate itself from the sun. Indeed, beloved friends, there is only one question you need answer. What am I choosing in this moment? What have I given mastery over life unto? What perception, what thought, what feeling? Feeling merely flows from the thought or the perception you have chosen. What behavior, what action am I choosing in this moment, and does it express the reality of my being? 
Am I busy extending love, or am I busying myself, fearfully trying to grasp at what I think can give me love, so I cannot lose it? Look well, then, upon your parents, your siblings, your mates, and your friends. Not one of them, not one of them, holds the power to bring love to you. So what are you trying to get from them? Why do you ever insist that another ought to be conformed to what you believe you need? It is futile, 100%, absolutely, positively futile, to seek love and relationship with anything or anyone. It is, however, quite appropriate to extend love in each relationship with everyone and everything. But the extension of that love requires that you have awakened to the truth that the only relationship that truly holds value is a relationship between you as the soul and God as your Creator. Imagine a light bulb in one of your fixtures that looks out from its little filament and said, Well, I hope that person who just walked in the door is the right one. If I could just reach out and grab them, maybe my own light would come on. Is it not a lot easier to simply take the cord and plug it into the right socket? How many times are you going to insist on trying to plug your cord into the wrong socket? Well, that one didn't work. I'll try this body. I'll try this person. I'll try this career. Not getting much juice from that either. And then you get angry because it's not giving you enough juice. Or it gave you enough juice yesterday, but not today. So it must be its fault. There is one little teeny socket into which you can plug your cord. It is the only one that it fits in. And it is the only socket wired to bring you the flowing and living waters of grace. That socket dwells only within your heart. Not the physical heart, but that which is symbolized by the physical heart, the core of your very being. But how many times in each day do you check to see that the cord is still plugged in? How many times do you remember to ask yourself, Is my commitment to love, or is my commitment to fear? Fear is the act of disconnecting your cord from the only socket that can truly satisfy you, and running about trying to plug it into somebody else's or something else's. I would ask you to consider this one question, as you look upon the whole of your experience. Has it ever worked? Can it ever work? Imagine trying to hold flowing water in the palm of your hand by squeezing the fingers together. How much you left with? Does it not run through the fingers no matter how hard you try? It finds the little holes and it flows away. You open your hand and there is not enough left there to wet the tongue. Yet each time you have looked upon another, whether parent or sibling or friend or mate or teacher, or whatever physical person or object, and tried to plug into that socket to get the juice you believe you need, that is just what you are doing and you literally end up squeezing the life out of the relationship itself. When you seek first the kingdom and plug that cord into the socket within your heart, when you remember that you and your father are one, that only love is real and nothing else matter, you will remember that the temptation to find love outside yourself is nothing more than the echo of an old habit, and that habit cannot live unless you feed it. Therefore, feed the only habit that matters the habit of remembering that the truth is true always, regardless of what is passing before your physical eyes and before your mind. In all coming and going, in all birth and death, in all arising and passing away of universe after universe after universe, in the midst of a flat tire or a sudden rainstorm, nothing, nothing holds value except your relationship with your Creator. When you have experienced in relationship with anyone or anything a moment of bliss, a moment of a peace that forever passes all understanding. A moment of fulfillment so sweet and so sublime that no word could touch it, much less express it. What you have experienced is only the flow of the love of God through you. That person or thing did not cause it. It was caused because, for just a moment, you stepped out of your drama, you stepped out of your dream and allowed the truth to be lived. Then, of course, you tricked yourself into believing, God, that was so sweet. That was the best thing I ever tasted. It must have come from you. Get over here. I need you. If ever you believe you need anything or anyone, rest assured, in that moment, you are living in delusion. All you need is love. All you need is love. Love fulfills all things. Love embraces all things. Love heals all things. Love transforms all things. Therefore, remember well. You and only you can become the cause of your fulfillment, your peace, and your completion of time. This requires that you do nothing save remember to establish the connection with your Creator. Is it not true that what you desire most of all is love? Is it not true that you hope that each relationship, no matter how short, no matter what its form, that each journey, that each undertaking will allow you the experience of peace? Is it not true that you, who find yourselves in and as a body temporarily in time, 
Is it not true that the grandest of experience you have known have been those that seem to flood the very cells of the body with love, with a sublime bliss and peace? Accept that truth, and what you desire beyond all things is the living experience of love. Then remember this. Nothing you do can bring love to you. Nothing you do can keep love for yourself in a form of your choosing. Nothing you do, nothing you do can make love appear in the form of your insistence. Release the drama, release the dream, and choose to remember the truth that is true always. Return to the kingdom within, even prior to every breath. Remind yourself and say to your Creator, I want only that which is true always. Love is what I want. Love is what you are. Love is what I receive. Love is who I am. I and my Father are one. Here and here alone do you discover what you seek. Then you become free to walk this earth, to be in the world, but not of it all. And though your friends will look upon you and still see a man or woman who seems to act much like them, yet though you see it not, Christ dwells with them. Something in them keeps attracting them to you. They are not sure what it is. Is it the shape of your body or the radiance of your eyes? It is not these things. They feel the quality of love. Can you imagine walking upon this earth, and no matter where you are, feeling as though every wisp of cloud and every blade of grass and all good things under heaven and earth were already residing within you, within this sphere of your countenance? Can you imagine walking upon this earth and sensing that the light from the farthest of stars that shines during the night is already within you, that the whole of creation was held in the palm of your hand? Would there be room yet to convince yourself that there is something you lack, something you need, that the restlessness you feel must be valid. In truth, you are like one who has been given a perfect treasure, a priceless jewel. You have placed it in your pocket and forgotten that you possess it. So you run around trying to look in everyone else's pocket. You have tried to seduce certain ones to surrender so that you can own the clothing and therefore try to possess the jewel that you hope is in their pocket. But the great truth is that you cannot possess love until you set it free. You cannot move into holy relationship with anyone or anything until you give up all trace of need to possess it. When your only desire is love, you will be willing to set anyone free, to support him or her in their own journey, no matter what it is or what it takes. Yet you will never feel your love waver. If a twinge of sadness arises because you recognize that two bodies in space are now going to go separate parts of the planet as that twinge arises, you will recognize it as the effect of a mistaken perception. You will move within, to the place in which all minds are joined. You will remember that your fulfillment does not rest in gaining love from another, but in giving love to everyone. If indeed you would know the truth that sets you free, heed each and every word that is being shared. If you would taste the sweet nectar of freedom, be committed to replacing every erroneous perception that you have ever made, and every thought you have ever held of everyone and everything. Set these things aside, and commit the fullness of your energy to the simple, but vigilant practice of remembering the truth, even prior to every breath. I live, yet not I, but Christ dwells in me. Therefore I submit and surrender to the truth that is true always. My fulfillment comes only from allowing Christ to be given to the world. The truth is very simple. It is not complex at all. Get out of the way and let love live through you. And all of a sudden you will know that, indeed, you are given all good things eternally. You will know that grace is reality. You will know that effortlessness is the way of life in the kingdom. But effortlessness does not mean that you do not feel, for you are in a dimension of feeling. Effortlessness does not mean that you do not discover how to deepen your ability to be the living embodiment of love. It does not mean that you do not challenge yourself to learn to express love in a way that can be heard by another. Effortlessness means simply that you abandon the resistance to what love requires in each moment. Effortlessness is the way of the kingdom. In the world, effortlessness means that you let down the wall you have built between yourself and all of creation. You no longer resist the lived experience of relationship, whatever it is, relationship with a cloud, relationship with another person, relationship with a dog or cat, relationship with April 15th when you write your government a check. Why not wrap it with a Christmas paper and ribbons and send it with much love? When you have learned to release the barriers, the walls between yourself and whatever is in front of you, when you open the door to your chakras, the body's energy centers, and simply allow love to be lived through you, 
when you look upon another person or another situation or another thing and realize that nothing in this world has the power to hurt you and nothing in this world has the power to take anything from you, you are free. If you remember to extend love, then you are free. You have transcended birth and death. The seeker is no more and only Christ walks this earth. Feeling is the doorway to love and freedom. If your commitment is indeed to look within and discover each and every obstacle you have ever created to the presence of love, why do you resist feeling those things? For well has it been said to you that on just the other side is the very love you seek. Deny not the role of feeling in this dimension, for feeling is everything. You cannot even know the presence of God unless you feel it. You cannot think about the presence of God. You cannot insist on a belief about the presence of God. That does not do it. That does not fill your cup. Feeling fills your cup. Feeling, unbridled, unblocked, unobstructed feeling, is a doorway to that love that sets you free. Therefore, when you say, I don't want to feel this, rest assured you are truly saying, Yes, a doorway to the kingdom of heaven is right in front of me. But if you think I'm going to open it, you're crazy. It's not worth it anyway. What is worth it is protecting the substitute I have made. I have called this the ego, the false self. What I once described to you as a gnat shouting at space, that's what I'm committed to. And I'm going to protect this thing. Give up heaven to protect this useless little thing. Oh, yes, you better believe I'd be willing to make that sacrifice. What's heaven, anyway? A bunch of love stuff, a bunch of people running round in bliss, some of them without bodies, hanging on to unlimitless fearlessness and utter fulfillment. Who needs it? Oh, but this little gnat, this little gnat of mine, oh, I'm going to make it shine. How many times have you tried to make the little gnat shine? For instance, everybody notice it's shining. Please, notice how great I am. I'm making my gnat shine. Listen to my whining and my complaining and the lamenting, the great sadness. Oh, how grand my gnat is. Meanwhile, the love of God flows through a multitude of universes and creates forever, even now, new universes. And the love of God does not even notice the gnat at all. No one is paying any attention. Your friends around you do not want to pay attention, although sometimes you corner them and they have no choice. But those of us without bodies, do you really actually think we waste our precious eternity taking your attempt to make that gnat shine seriously? Indeed, because we love you, we give you the space and we honor your free will to be as little and as miserable as you wish. We will wait until you choose to come once again into the greatness in which you truly reside. We never withdraw our love from you. We simply look through your storyline because what we wish to love is the Christ that dwells within you. What day and hour will you decide to love yourself as God has first loved you? To truly, to truly, once and for all, make the decision to live. For until you decide to live with and for and forever from the mind of Christ, life has not yet begun. Right away the mind reacts, Oh my God, that's a bit of a blow, isn't it? Look at all the experience I've had, Joshua. How can you tell me I haven't lived? Why, there was this drama, then there was that drama, then there was that drama over there. Don't you remember seventeen lifetimes ago when I did this and then I did that? I struggled through that one, and I struggled through this one. I've lived. No, you have dreamed. Do you awaken in the morning and realize that you have had a whole night of dreams of receiving ribbons and trophies, and what have you from that world? And then you say, well, that was very real. The trophies must be out sitting on my kitchen table. While you dreamt it felt real enough. And that is the quality I am speaking to you here. If you wish to take this as an affront, it is perfectly fine. It will not disturb my peace at all. Until you finally decide to come into life as the presence of Christ, as the presence of love, and to own each moment of your experience as wholly self-created, for no other reason than that you have chosen it from the perfect and infinite freedom of your unlimited being, life has not yet begun. When you look upon all things without judgment through the eyes of forgiveness, when you decide to embody only the reality of love no matter what anybody else is doing, that is when life begins. As of this date on your calendar, there have only been a handful of beings who have truly lived life upon this plane, a very small handful. There are many of us that would just absolutely be thrilled if you would join the club. I will let you in on a little secret. Until you do, you do not get to graduate. You will never leave this plane, filled with conflict and suffering, as it seems to be until you have lived the experience of walking this earth holy as the thought of love and form, with no other allegiance but to love. You will never leave this plane. You will never take up your cross and follow me. 
you will spin around again and again and again, only to be confronted with the same need to decide wholly for love. You will finally look heavenward and say, Father, let's get on with it. Enough time has been wasted. It's gone. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Now, I am committed to love. Bring on whatever I must experience to bring up from the depth the places where I've hidden it within me. Every obstacle that must yet be dissolved by the light of the grace of perfect love. And I will do whatever I can, from my side of the fence, to open up those places, to feel those places, to embrace those places, and to love those places, to claim those places as wholly self-created. I will let my parents off the hook. I will let my siblings off the hook. I will let my great-great-great-great-great-grandfather off the hook. I will let Adam and Eve off the hook. I will let the government off the hook, and I will love myself enough to heal my separation from God. I will be humble enough to recognize that if I am having an experience because I know I have made the commitment to heal, then you have indeed, precious Father, brought me all good things. For this moment of experience can be seen through eyes that recognize that it is but a stepping stone to the perfect peace that I seek. My life is no longer mine, for I know not how to correct that one fundamental error but I can surrender into feeling each moment fully while choosing love anyway, and love will dissolve the pain that I have carried, all because I insisted on trying to separate myself from the source of my being. This little gnat of mine is being put to rest, for the only thing that can shine is Christ. For Christ, the sons and daughters of God, the offspring of God, is God's only creation. The rest of it is attributed to you. Even space and time is yours. Your Creator's only creation is you, the truth of you. For you are love, and God creates only that which is like unto Himself, and God is only love. Many of you believe you are on a spiritual path. You will know that if it is true by your willingness to feel and experience wholly exactly what is in front of you moment to moment. So if you have a conflict with another, and you sit in your chair and decide to pray or meditate in order to change the feeling state within yourself, and you arise later and say, There, I am feeling much better now, but the issue has not been solved with another, nothing has changed. Go therefore to the other, open your heart, share and resolve. If you have offended another, ask them for forgiveness. If you have judged another, admit it. Ask for their forgiveness. It is only in such a way that you can truly heal the place of conflict within. Beloved friends, the essence of this lesson is quite simple. Where are you now? Are you willing to allow yourself to see everything around you and within you as the doorway to the kingdom of heaven, waiting only for you to acknowledge its presence and to open it? Are you willing to truly be right where you are, holy, right where you are? And the mind says, well, of course, I'm on a spiritual path. Rest assured, if you look well into your feelings and find any trace of resistance, you have not yet made the necessary commitment that gives you the power to open the door. Only through feeling do you awaken. Feeling is the message of this lesson, for it is only through feeling that you truly awaken. Concepts and ideas can begin to direct the mind to believe that there is something out there that is attractive that might even be better than what you have been doing before. But concepts and ideas do not in themselves open a door. They are symbols, and that is all. A symbol cannot quench your thirst. It is only at the level of genuine feeling that you can once again know the presence of God who dwells within you, around you, and through you even now. Feel what you have created as a substitute for the truth. Own it, look upon it, and then let it go. Learn it regardless of what choice you have made in the past. Once you have embraced it, once you have felt it, you remain perfectly innocent and imbued with that power to choose again to feel to learn once again to feel the glorious warmth that permeates the kingdom of heaven. Nothing you can do with time can match the importance of what we have shared in this lesson. Nothing you do in the field of time holds a candle to the incredible gift that is waiting for you. Therefore, use time constructively by deciding to love, that love may teach you of itself. Indeed, beloved and holy friends, when you have done this, you will find yourself translated into a form that could never possibly be contained by the space and volume of a physical body. You will look upon this entire dimension as a mere temporary learning device. You will set it aside, as a child sets aside a toy that has been outgrown. But you will do it with deep appreciation and love for the toy that you have played with for so long. You will carry with you a deep sense of gratitude for everything this physical dimension has brought to you. There will not be a molecule of beingness within you, 
that will feel any resentment, any longing, any anger, or any remorse for anything. All of your experience will have become wholly acceptable to you, for it was by such experience that you were finally driven to want only the truth. From this day forward you will never again be able to truly convince yourself that all of your attempts to stay distracted or conform to the world are really accomplishing a thing. You will find that your mind begins to penetrate the unconscious habits you have created in an attempt to hide from what must be felt. You will know perfectly well when you are simply deluding yourself. You will start to smile and say, Oh yes, there I go again. Might as well set that aside and plant my feet firmly on the ground and indeed live with passion from the truth of the kingdom of heaven. In the way of the heart we will speak ever more directly and even more forcefully to you, for the time comes quickly when this planet will not be willing to tolerate untidy house guests that are not willing to vibrate at the frequency of the being toward which the planet herself is preparing to move. Therefore, be not caught by coming home one day and discovering that the landlord has changed the locks, and you have not a place to rest your head. Rather, become the living embodiment of love and journey with your Holy Mother into an entirely new dimension of being. And never forget to sing, laugh, dance, and play along the way. Be you therefore at peace, beloved friends. Amen.